Earnings season is well underway, and we have more large businesses reporting their earnings this week. In this video, I want to discuss the earnings releases I will be watching, and let you know my thoughts ahead of their reports. And just like last week, I will be doing my best to cover as many of the earnings reports as possible as they come out. So make sure to stay tuned to my channel this week if you want to stay on top of everything. The stocks I will be watching in specific are PayPal, Amazon, AMD, Starbucks, MasterCard, Apple, Fortinet, and Hershey, as they all report this week. So let's hop right into the video and start from the top with PayPal. Now, the reason that I am paying attention to PayPal and watching this company's earnings is because this is a stock that is loved by a lot of financial influencers and YouTubers at the moment. PayPal is currently being perceived as a value stock because it is down roughly 70% plus from its all-time highs. This was once a darling of the stock market, but over the past couple of years, it has produced some serious losses. I have also taken a look at PayPal on my channel previously, and I do have some reservations about this stock, which is why I do not currently own it. And my main reservation here is that the revenue for PayPal is continuing to grow and hit all-time highs. This is a very good thing to see. However, if we take a look at PayPal's overall cash flows, we can see that its operating cash flow has been declining over the past couple of years, and now it is sitting at about $4.8 billion in the trailing 12 months. If we actually take a look here at PayPal's revenue versus its free cash flow, we can see that its free cash flow is clearly not growing with the overall revenue. And this is what my major concern is, because what creates shareholder value with a stock and with a business is profitability growth. It is not revenue growth. So if a business's revenue is growing, but its profits are not growing or they're actually going down, then it doesn't actually create any shareholder value. So what I focus on on my channel is businesses that grow their profits with the overall revenue growth. Additionally, since PayPal's free cash flow is not growing with the revenue, it suggests that its free cash flow margin is actually declining. And it is. In the trailing 12 months, PayPal has a free cash flow margin of about 14%, and we can see that it has been clearly downtrending over the past few years now. We can also see that its gross margin has been consistently downtrending for the past about nine years now. And typically when I see a business's margins declining like this, it suggests that its moat is being weakened and its moat is being attacked. Which brings me to my second major concern with PayPal stock, which is simply that the payment space is a very competitive space. And personally, I don't actually know what the moats within this industry are. So I don't know why a customer would choose PayPal over another option that is out there. I've also been hearing anecdotal reports that Wise is actually a better business than PayPal, and a lot of people are using Wise now as well. I also have a screenshot here of PayPal's guidance for 2024. And here we can see that the company is projecting revenue growth of approximately 7% this year. It's also projecting earnings per share to be flat for the year of 2024. So they're not expecting any earnings per share growth this year. The company is also expecting free cash flow of roughly $5 billion. And if we take a look at PayPal's free cash flow throughout history, we can see that it did top here in 2021 at about $5.6 billion. So this company has been producing roughly $5 billion in annual free cash flow for the past few years now, which again is suggesting that PayPal is not going to really see much free cash flow growth again in 2024. So again, profits are not really going to be growing. Lastly, if we do want to take a look at PayPal's price to free cash flow today, it is sitting at 16.7, which is well below the company's historical average of roughly 32. So I can understand why the market thinks that this stock is cheap and why a lot of people think that this stock is cheap. But overall, a price to free cash flow of roughly 17 for a business that is not really growing its profits is kind of not really looking like a majorly cheap stock to me at least. It's not at a big enough discount to me to want to buy into it is basically what I'm saying. Because as I've said here on my channel previously, I do have stocks in my portfolio that are trading for about 11 times earnings right now and seeing 15 to 20% profit growth annually. So when I take a look at those price ratios versus that growth, it's pretty hard for me to want to buy a stock like PayPal that's trading for about a 17 price multiple and not seeing its profitability grow. So that is kind of my reservations on PayPal. That is why I don't own the stock right now. I am going to be watching its earnings to see if they up their guidance or if anything changes with the business. But at the moment, this is not a business that I'm actually looking to buy, but it is one that I am going to follow and see how it plays out. All right, moving on to the next stock now, which is Amazon. And this one is actually in my portfolio and I do own shares of Amazon. So if we take a look, Amazon is trading right near its all time highs. Now, if we quickly go over and take a look at Amazon's financials here as well, we can see that its revenue is hitting all-time highs and the revenue growth is very consistent for this business. Now, what I also love to see about Amazon is the company's operating cash flows have been absolutely exploding and they are at an all-time high now of roughly $85 billion. And for those of you who may not know, back in 2022, Amazon made it clear that it was going to be focusing on increasing its profit margins 
and overall cash flows. And the company executed extremely well on doing so with the cash flows completely rebounding and now hitting all time highs. Amazon's operating cash flow margin is also seeing massive expansion and it now is up to roughly 15%. Its all-time high operating cash flow margin was roughly 17%, so the cash flow margin looks like it does have a little bit more room to continue expanding. However, I am not expecting Amazon to double its operating cash flow margin from here going forward. So basically what that means is that massive explosion that we saw to Amazon's operating cash flows over the past about 18 months, I am not expecting that rapid level of profitability growth to actually continue. And I do think that it will start to slow down, as Amazon starts to hit the peak of what its margin potential actually is. So I am expecting the business's overall cash flows to continue growing, but I'm not expecting them to just continue growing at that rapid of a rate going forward. Now, another interesting thing to point out about Amazon is its gross margin has been continuing to expand nicely over the past 12 years now. And relative to PayPal, where we saw that its margins were declining, Amazon is a business where I believe that its moat is actually getting better and expanding over time. And this is because Amazon is actually becoming a more profitable business as it continues to grow. And as Amazon continues to grow, I also think that it is getting harder and harder to disrupt, which means that its overall moat is expanding as well. Amazon also gave us guidance for the first quarter of 2024, and they are expecting sales to be between 138 billion to 145 billion. So the middle of the range there is around 141 billion dollars in revenue for the first quarter, which is growth of roughly 10% year over year. So Amazon is still expecting some pretty strong year over year growth. They're also expecting operating income to come in around $10 billion, which is a double over last year. So the company is still projecting to grow its profits and its margins quite significantly in the first quarter, which is why I do think overall profits are still going to be up in the first quarter of 2024. Now, in terms of Amazon's price today, it is trading for a price to operating cash flow of roughly 22, and the company's historical average over the past decade has been roughly 28 if we want to round up. So Amazon is actually trading below its historical average price ratios, and it's actually near the, the bottom of its historical range of where the market values the business. So because of this, I do actually think that Amazon is not looking overly expensive right now, especially if the business can continue to grow its revenues and its operating cash flows. All right, now let's move on to the third stock in this video, which is AMD. This is a stock that has been very hot in the market, and I've been asked about this stock a lot recently. So right away, this stock is actually in a little bit of a correction from its all-time highs of $211. It's actually in about a 25% correction. However, I do still think that this stock is quite expensive right now. So let's take a quick look at its financials, and I'll kind of explain why I think that. Here we can see that AMD's revenue has actually been topping out for about two years now, and it is sitting at about $22.7 billion in the trailing 12 months. Additionally, if we take a look at AMD's operating cash flows, we can see that there was a massive explosion to the cash flows from 2019 to about 2021. However, since then, the cash flows have been dropping quite significantly. So just like PayPal, AMD's profits have not actually been growing with its overall revenues. And I do not like to see this as an investor because again, it is profitability growth that actually creates shareholder value. AMD also gave us their outlook for the first quarter of 2024, and they are expecting revenue of about $5.4 billion in the first quarter of 2024. Now, if we head back over to AMD's income statement, we can see that for the first quarter of 2023, the company produced about $5.35 billion of revenue. What this ultimately means is AMD is not really expecting significant revenue growth year over year. It's going to probably be between 1% and 5%, at least based on the company's own expectations and, and projections that they put out to the market. And if we go and take a look at AMD's price today, its price to operating cash flow is sitting at 153, a whopping 153. And there's no really profitability metric that isn't insane on this business. For example, the price to operating income is also at 693. The price to EBITDA even is at about 66. So based on these profitability metrics, AMD looks like it is very, very expensive today. Even if we take a look at the business on a price to sales ratio basis, it is trading for a price to sales of 11, which is very high, especially for a business that is not even growing its revenues right now. So AMD, in my opinion, looks incredibly expensive. It looks like it is massively overvalued and it's not even close to a price that I would ever consider paying for this business. And in my opinion, I do think that AMD's stock has been hyped up with the overall semiconductor industry and the overall AI wave that is going on right now. AMD kind of seems to just benefit off of whatever Nvidia is doing. So if Nvidia stock is doing well, then AMD stock also tends to do well, it seems like. So I think that AMD kind of just got caught up with Nvidia, 
but AMD does not have the same fundamental growth that Nvidia has. So in my opinion, I actually do think that AMD is a more expensive business than Nvidia. And I think that Nvidia is still an expensive business, okay? So AMD is, in my opinion, not a stock that I am going to look to buy anytime soon, but it is a stock that I am following because it's one of those businesses that a lot of people are paying attention to. And it's one of those businesses that could be kind of guiding the market. Like if AMD comes out with an awful report and the stock drops 20%, that could have a pretty large impact on investor sentiment towards the market as a whole, at least in my own opinion. So I'm going to be watching AMD's earnings, not as a potential buy, but overall just to see how strong the semiconductor industry is and what investor sentiment is towards semiconductor stocks, especially the ones that I do believe are massively overvalued. All right, but let's move on to the fourth stock that I wanna talk about in this video, which is Starbucks. Now, I actually covered Starbucks on my channel recently, and I said that this stock looks like it is looking arguably cheap and could potentially outperform the S&P 500 over the next five years. So very quickly, if we take a look at Starbucks income statement, we can see that its revenue is sitting at an all time high and its revenue growth has been incredibly consistent over the past about 14 years now. So overall, that looks like a very good thing. Operating income for the business is also sitting at an all time high. And it looks like it has been consistently growing as well outside of COVID. But overall, the business's operating income is sitting at an all time high too. Now, if we take a look at Starbucks operating cash flows, we can see that they are near all time highs as well at $6.8 billion. So overall, what I am seeing for Starbucks is a business where the fundamentals are currently sitting at all time highs. Revenue is at an all time high, operating income is at an all time high, and cash flows are also at an all time high. Now, what's also interesting is Starbucks gave us their fiscal year 2024 guidance. So, what the company is expecting to achieve in 2024. And here we can see that they are expecting their revenue to grow between 7 and 10% again in 2024. So, the business is expecting its revenues to continue growing. It's also expecting its operating margin to continue expanding. So, its margins are expanding as well and gap earnings per share are projected to grow between 15 and 20% this year. So again, further margin expansion means that the earnings for this business are growing to grow more quickly than the overall revenue. So this business's fundamentals are at an all time high, and it looks like its revenues and its profits are projected to grow even more in 2024. However, if we go and take a look at Starbucks price to operating income, it is currently sitting at about 17.3 today, and its 10 year historical average is about 28.4. So its price to operating income versus its historical averages is well below average. Additionally, in the stock market crash of 2020, Starbucks hit a price to operating income of about 16.2. Then again, here in the market sell off of 2022, it got down to about 17. So what I'm seeing here is Starbucks current price to operating income is at the level that it sees during stock market crashes or major stock market corrections. However, this business's fundamentals again, are at an all time high right now and projected to continue growing pretty strongly over the next year. This could ultimately suggest that Starbucks is looking a little bit more on the cheap end or could be potentially undervalued. So I'm gonna be watching the company's earnings to see if it is still meeting its own projections and if it is still on track to continue growing revenues and earnings by 10 to 15% in 2024. And if so, then again, the stock could be looking undervalued today. All right, now let's move on to the fifth stock that I wanna talk about in this video, which is MasterCard. Now, MasterCard and Visa are like a duopoly in the payment space, it seems, or in the credit card space. Not quite, but they're like the two largest players, it seems. Now, Visa reported its earnings last week, and Visa reported some pretty strong numbers as well. And as I said last week, Visa is one of the most fundamentally sound businesses I have ever seen. And honestly, so is MasterCard. MasterCard has incredible profit margins, and the growth of this business historically has been absolutely incredible. So the question for me is, does the stock look cheap today before it heads into earnings? Well, if we take a quick look at MasterCard's financials here and we go over to its income statement, we can see that its revenue is sitting at an all time high of $25 billion. And take a look at how nicely this company has been growing over the past 20 years now. If we also take a look at its cash flows, its cash flows are currently sitting at an all time high of about $12 billion. And if we take a look at what analysts are expecting, they are expecting the revenue to grow by about 12.3% this year and earnings to grow by about 18.2% this year. So pretty dang strong growth to MasterCard that is projected for the year of 2024. However, MasterCard is currently trading for a price to free cash flow of 39 and its historical average is about 36.4. So it is selling slightly above its historical averages going into earnings this week. Additionally, a price ratio of 39 is on the more expensive end, at least in my own opinion, especially for a business that is growing its revenue by about 12% annually. For example, Google just reported its earnings and it grew its revenues by about 15% year over year, 
but its price to free cash flow is all the way down at around 25 to 27, which is a significant discount to MasterCard. So MasterCard seems like it is a little bit more of an expensive stock, but also to be fair, this stock has been on the more expensive end over the past decade. So it doesn't seem like this stock likes to sell off too much or get to a price that I would be happy to buy it at or consider cheap. It did get down to a price to free cash flow of 27 here in the tech sell off of 2022. And in hindsight, that looks like it was a great buying opportunity to pick up some shares of MasterCard. But personally, at the current price with its price ratios above historical averages, with a 39 price to free cash flow with about 12% revenue growth this year, I do think that it is more on the expensive end. So I'm not going to be looking to buy any MasterCard shares before earnings or after earnings or anything like that. I just want to see the company's overall earnings because they do give us a good insight into how much consumers are spending on MasterCard credit cards and the overall consumer spending, etc. So MasterCard is one of those businesses that I think is just very interesting to watch and gain some additional insights from. And if the stock ever does sell off again, like it did in 2022, then maybe I would consider buying it. But at its current price, again, I'm not really too interested in it. All right, moving on to the next stock. This one is Apple. Now, Apple is a stock that I have talked about a lot on my channel previously. So if you are a regular viewer, then you already know that I do think Apple is a very expensive stock in the market as well. And you're going to kind of see this theme in the market right now where, you know, the market's near all time highs and businesses are trading for expensive prices or high multiples while not really seeing that much growth. And to me, that is just kind of suggesting that a lot of things are on the more expensive end today. And Apple is no exception. So if we take a look at Apple's revenue here, we can see that it is sitting at about $386 billion in the trailing 12 months. And this revenue has been flat for over two years now. So Apple is in a period currently where it's not really seeing its revenue grow. If we also take a look at its cash flows, its cash flows haven't really grown in a couple of years now as well. So this business is currently in a little bit of some stagnation. It's not really seeing a lot of growth. I have also recently been reading articles that Apple has been discounting its iPhone 15 and putting a lot of its products on sale to try and boost sales. And I've seen a lot of people on Twitter saying that this is a bearish thing and I've been seeing a little bit more bearishness coming towards Apple stock, saying that the company is struggling to continue growing now that it is such a large business. On average, analysts are also expecting Apple's revenue to grow by about 2.5% this year and its earnings per share to grow by about 3.3%. So analysts are not expecting this to be a strong year for Apple either. And they're basically expecting the overall business's profits and revenues to be flat once again. However, if we go and take a look at Apple's price to free cash flow today, it is currently sitting at 25, which I do think is very expensive for a business that is not currently growing. If we also take a look at Apple's 10 year average, it has been about 18.5. So Apple is trading well above its historical average price ratios as well, while the business is not really growing. Ultimately, this leads me to believe that Apple is actually quite an expensive stock today, and it's not one that I am currently looking to buy. However, it is one of the largest stocks in the market, so it is one that I do pay attention to and I do follow on my channel. But at its current price, again, it's not a stock that I'm looking to buy today. And I am really hoping that this business can turn things around and get revenue growing once again. I am just uncertain how the business is going to do that because they seem like they need to launch some sort of new product and the Apple vision seems like it was kind of a flop. So I don't know where Apple is going to get its revenue growth from to really see a boost to overall profits and everything, at least over the next couple of years. So for that reason, I'm not really interested in Apple today, at least in terms of buying it, but I am going to stay up to date with the company and at least see the, the metrics that this company puts out in its earnings release. All right, now let's move on to the next stock, which is Fortinet. Now, Fortinet was a recent stock that I had in the YouTube portfolio. However, I did sell it recently because I do think that the stock did get expensive, which is kind of the theme on my channel right now as someone who does focus on valuations in the market. So let's discuss very briefly why I think that Fortinet is looking a little bit more on the expensive end. So if we take a look at Fortinet's long-term revenue growth, it is really a thing of beauty. This company has grown its revenue consistently every single quarter for almost 20 years straight now, and the revenue is sitting at an all-time high. However, if we take a look at the percent change to the revenue growth, we can see that its revenue growth rates have been declining significantly over the past about 18 months now, and they are at an all time low now. So Fortinet's revenue growth is slowing down significantly. And again, it is seeing the lowest amount of revenue growth in the company's history. Fortinet also gave us guidance for 2024, and they are expecting to grow revenue by 8.7% this year. So that is how much growth the company is expecting. Now, if we head back over to Fortinet's income statement and we take a look at a yearly chart, we can see that the worst year over year revenue growth rate for Fortinet 
was in 2013 with 15.3% year over year growth. This means that if Fortinet does 8.7% revenue growth in 2024, it again is going to be the company's lowest revenue growth year in the company's history by far. Again, its previous low was 15% in 2013. So overall, that means that this business looks like it is kind of slowing down right now. Now, if we go and take a look at Fortinet's price today, it is trading for a price to free cash flow of 28, where its 10 year historical average has been about 27.5. So Fortinet is trading slightly above its historical average price ratios. Now, as a whole, I think that a 28 multiple for about 9% revenue growth is on the higher and more expensive end. But additionally, Fortinet is trading above its historical average price ratios, while the business is projected to see its worst revenue growth year in the company's history by far. So that kind of suggests to me that maybe this stock should be selling for a discount to its historical averages right now but it is actually selling for a premium. So overall, that led me to believe that Fortinet stock is actually quite expensive today. And I do believe that there is a lot more value in the markets, which is why I sold it in the YouTube portfolio and bought a different stock with those proceeds. However, this is a stock that I do still wanna follow and pay attention to, and I am keeping it on my watch list in case it does get down to a range again, where I do think that it is quite cheap, like it was here in 2022, when it was trading for a price to free cash flow of about 18.8. If Fortinet ever trades for these multiples again, then I will be compelled to look into the position more and maybe restart that position. But currently, I am thinking that Fortinet stock is quite expensive, so I would want a pretty significant drop to become interested in this business once again. All right, moving on to the final stock of the video, which is Hershey's. And I'm sure we all know what Hershey's business does. You've probably eaten Hershey's chocolate or candies before. And this business, in my opinion, has an incredible moat, and it's probably going to be around in 50 years from now as long as people are continuing to eat candy and chocolate, which I do think they will be. Now, why I am interested in Hershey right now is because the stock is in about a 31% correction from its all-time highs. And whenever I see a high-quality business with a very strong moat and its stock is down 30%, I immediately become interested. So this is a stock that I am watching to see if it does get cheaper. If we take a look at Hershey's long-term revenue growth, we can see that its revenue has been growing over the past 20 years, and the revenue is kind of sitting at an all-time high right now. This is the same story for the company's operating cash flows. They are kind of topping out over the past year, but they are still right near an all-time high of $2.3 billion. Now, Hershey also gave us their outlook for 2024, where it says, the company expects net sales growth of 2-3%, to primarily driven by net price realization, and reported earnings per share to be relatively flat as higher cocoa and sugar costs. So the company is projecting about 2-3% to revenue growth and 0% earnings per share growth. That's actually not very good overall. I mean, that's not a lot of growth to any business. And for me, if a business is not growing its revenues or its profits, then I would want its price ratio or the price that I pay for it to be on the lower end. So ultimately, for me, it comes down to what is Hershey's stock actually trading for today? But first off, I want to show this chart right here of cocoa prices so far in 2023 because they have been absolutely exploding. And while cocoa prices have been exploding, I do think that Hershey's margins are probably compressing right now and its profits could actually be declining because the company put out those projections a few months ago, but over the past couple of months, cocoa prices have absolutely skyrocketed, and I don't know if Hershey saw this coming. So Hershey could potentially report a weak quarter, and if the business does report a weak quarter and the stock continues to come down, then maybe it would get to a point where I would consider it cheap and actually want to take on a position in this business. However, it is not quite there for me just yet. And here's why. Hershey's stock is still trading for a price to free cash flow of 24.4. This is basically in line with how Apple is trading today. It's slightly cheaper, but Hershey again is not projecting really any revenue growth this year or any free cash flow or earnings growth this year. So zero growth for a 24 multiple I do think is still expensive, but Hershey is one of those businesses where I think it's going to be around for the long term. I think it does have an incredible moat. And I do think that over the long term, the business will continue to grow. So for those reasons, I am going to be paying attention to Hershey's earnings, and I am going to see if the stock sees any weakness after it reports its numbers on a potential margin compression due to cocoa prices skyrocketing. And if the stock does come down enough, then maybe it could be one that I would add to my portfolio, but I do still think that it needs to drop a little bit more for me. So that's my thoughts on the earnings week coming up here. If you did enjoy this video, then please remember to leave a like on it. And if you have any comments, then please remember to leave them down in the comment section. I always love reading your guys' comments. Also, as I said at the beginning of the video, I'm going to do my best to cover as many earnings as I possibly can this week on my channel. So if you're not already subscribed and you want to stay up to date with all of the earnings that come out, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and you will get notified when I post my videos throughout the week.
But with that being said, that is going to wrap up the video, everyone. So thank you so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it, and I really hope to see you all again in my next one.